Welcome back to the channel. We're going over the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and at the end of the video, I am now going over a few stock plays that I am liking and giving you the upside and downside potential and showing you the entries and exits or how I'd be looking at it. Let's get right to it. The first thing we're gonna do is go over a broad view of the market and how overall we are moving. Now, going to yesterday, there was a few comments I had said regarding the VIX, and I kinda wanna go over those first. Now, going into the beginning of the day, this purple line right here actually represents the start of the day. The NASDAQ is 24 hours right there. I just want to show you the spy. So going into today, I anticipated that we were going to get some downside. I showed you why. I gave you my logical reason why. What happened? Out of the gate, you gap down from roughly 412, coming to that bottom range of about 407.5. Now, as we zoom out really quick, this is the same range we continue to talk about. Over the past week, week and a half, you've been trading in this range right here. This is it. This is how you are trading in between 417 of highs down to 407, a $10 range back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what do I say about ranges? You want to trade the trend of the range, right? So if you come to the upside, guess what? You short it to the downside. If you come to the top side, guess what? You're going to grab along to that bottom, play to the upside. That's just how it works. That's what I'm looking at. That's how I play the market. It's all about playing trends and price action. Overall, again, if you want to say, Tyler, well, aren't you bearish overall on the market? Yes, I am overall bearish on the broad spectrum. Does that mean tomorrow you get the dump? No. Does that mean a recession starting next week? No. It's not what that means. I can be a broad scale bear on the market, think that that is coming, but as a day trader, I have to adapt to what the market is going to give me. What did the market give us today? So going to today, I told everyone I like the downside. Tesla was the play on the downside. I mentioned it yesterday and I had puts going overnight. I exited those right at open. It hit target number one, 695 pretty quick, went down to 690, almost hit target number two, gave that out yesterday. Then he started pumping back up and I like Tesla to the upside, not gonna lie right now. But going back to SPY, I need to show you exactly what's happening. Now you're coming back to this region. This is the fourth test of this zone, if you will. We'll come, this is one overall one two but i'm gonna say it's one just based on how quickly it happened in the same day then you have your second your third now your fourth where do i see us going how do i see us moving personally i'm going to show you why i think this but it's looking like you want to get a press up the last time i said this you didn't get it but it's just depending how you open tomorrow i can't predict what's going to happen in the morning i can't tell you if bars going to show up Honestly, the after hours have been a wild, wild game. So looking at this, in my opinion, I think you have upside potential and it's primarily going to be what big money was doing today. And if we look at what big money was doing, this is book map. This is going to give you an overall viewpoint of the actual liquidity and who was buying and how the market was moving. This is the ES buy futures. Now looking at this, the link is down below. Also, you want to check it out and it is free on thinkorswim as well. You get I think three free things to look at this for, which is ES is pretty much all I use it for. Now, as you are pushing up, you can see the whole trend on the day was up to the upside. This is showing you liquidity, yes. What I wanna highlight though is this bottom part down here. This is what I wanna look at. The blue represents buy orders and these are hidden on the order book. So you wouldn't see these on your typical level two data. These are more of the dark pool and things like that. So you're seeing a lot of this volume coming in. We mentioned yesterday there was no buying, right? So the CVD was going up, which indicated that there was buying, but there was no massive orders, which in my opinion led to more downside. That's why I was short going into today. Now looking at this, you had CVD climbing up, climbing up, climbing up, which is overall buyers versus sellers. And you started just going up. Now, anytime this would dump the CVD, your price would still hold the trend, which made me more and more bullish throughout the day. And that's how I was trading the market in Discord. Now, as you're looking through this, the orders start to get interesting as we get to the end of the day. Now, when you get to the end of the day, around two, when power starts, you get a big order of about 2,000 lots. That's that's a lot if you're looking at the ES. And you get another massive order right here at around 18, 1,900 right there, another 1,900 lots to end the day out right there. So as we're looking at this, when power started, it led to a very bullish thesis, in my opinion, towards the end of the day. This one actually was at the after hours, 15 minutes after market close, which is very interesting leading us into tomorrow, but CVD did come down. But seeing how the price stayed at these ranges, even with CVD dipping, makes me bullish. And you can see all these buyers throughout the day as well, not very many sellers. So that leaves me bullish into this, that's reason number one. Now reason number two, I'm looking at cheddar flow, I'm looking at the overall flow of the market. What I wanna look at is SPY. Now as we look at SPY, this is, one of the first days that calls have outweighed puts, as we can see right there. And then we look at QQQ, it is still in favor of the puts on tech. However, if you're looking at this, this has been over 2.0 
on the whole week going back to last week. So this is actually a step in the right direction, if you will. But another thing that really has me looking interesting was something I mentioned yesterday was the VIX. Now this morning, I told you yesterday, I anticipated a bounce here. You had a really nice bounce to start the day from 24 on the VIX, 24.8, all the way to 26.2 but then it started tanking. And this is the first time that we have had a real dip on VIX. If you come and look at this, since we started pumping up back in, you know, middle of April, once it, once your VIX spiked above, you kind of held this overall. And then now look, boom, you're getting back below this. And typically when you get below 24 on VIX, what happens? You start to get a little bit of a run. So this is queuing up for a pretty interesting day tomorrow. But again, what, what do I say about trading? Again, I'm going to go back to where I started this video off in the beginning, right? So if we're looking at the S&P, if you're looking at going long, betting on the upside on any stocks, right? You're always waiting for a break of this zone, right? So you want to see a break, trending, a retest, and then boom, that's when you would want to go long, right? So what you're looking for ultimately is a break, retest, and this is where you start to get your longs, right? Why is the reason for that? Because your stop losses are going to be tight and it's going to respect this overall trend and this demand zone. You've come up to supply multiple times and guess what? So as you come back down, that's where you want to get the entries for your retest. Now, chances are, again, we always anticipate a rejection from these levels the first time. You always have to play the rejection of the supply and demand zones so when you come down you have to play the bounce that just is what statistically shows us works the majority of the time when you come up you have to anticipate the rejection of that zone as well and just looking at this pattern overall what has it told us if we come back and you just went long every single time and went short short here that's one win two win three four five six and then what is going to happen here so we'll have to see how that plays so overall this trend has been working Looking at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ has been pretty interesting on the day as well. So it's looking like you're coming back to this zone right here about 1270 to get rejected. You're going to be battling on, on the overnight market. I'm very interested to see how this plays out. But the longer you remain up here, the more bullish you look as you consolidate at resistance. So I'm interested to see how this works out. I'm looking for a top side push to about 12.8, 12.9. That's where I kind of see us going. And the question is, can you break above this? Because if you start to break above this, this leads back to spy of us pushing back to that potential 430 target we have had for quite a while. That is our target here, 430 to 428 roughly. That's where we want to see this push before more continuous downside for our longer dated puts to get back in on the overall market crash. Now, is it possible right here that you start seeing some downside? A hundred percent. I think it's possible. You could come out easily tomorrow and start shooting back down. It's important to remember you have CPI data coming out on Friday. So as of right now, it's looking like you're just going to be in this trend. However, I am highly on the watch for a clear breakout of this zone and you have to be watching out for it. Now I'm going to go over a few stock plays that I'm liking specifically in this market. Now, again, I'm trading a lot of the bigger stocks, a lot of the bigger caps. That's what I like trading just so you can actually get liquidity on those specifically in this choppy of a market. Now I want to talk about Amazon. Amazon has been making these higher lows on the day. You saw a nice little dip down on the day. A big level it's been holding is that monthly region right here. So anytime you get around 122.3, 122.2, it's been a very good zone to look for. It's worth mentioning you did have a gap on the day and this is one of the trades we took in Discord was to fill this gap. So on the daily time frame to start it out, you did have a gap and you did fill that right there at 123.8. But looking at this overall, I still think Amazon looks good because of the amount of volume that you are getting in it right now. So if you can continue this bullish type trend on futures on the S&P, then I would be looking for Amazon to potentially come back to that weak level of overall 125.3 to 124.9 roughly up there. Now, again, does this mean when the market opens, you start longing this? No, that is not what it means, people. You don't just jump into it blind. You have to look at futures. You have to see the market's bullish. You have to be looking at these things. Ultimately, you want to see you hold this region right here. Now, if you break below this, where do I see us going? Because that's a really big topic right now with the downside potential on Amazon. That is a very big and pretty much very important question, right? So I think you do have a region right here about 
five. That's a big level. And then also that weekly down here at about four, 116. That's going to be a very big level as well. Target one and target two if we really start to slip. Because chances are, if we come out on a bear side tomorrow, what's going to happen? It's going to be a pretty hard slip to the downside. And why do I say that? Is because when you look at the S&P, there's so much room to get back down to this bottom level of 407, 408. Now, I want to look at Apple. And this hit both targets. It's actually played out on both ways. So you could have traded this to the bear side and the bullish side looking at this. So target was down here roughly 143.5. You end up hitting 144.5. 0.1 roughly. Then you came back up, remounted the weekly that had been your entry zone. You hit target number one at 148, and you're trying to push back to the monthly 149.8. Overall, Apple's looking good, and it's really leading the market on the day, performing very, very well. Going into Tesla. So Tesla, again, I mentioned this yesterday, was one of my favorite plays. You pushed down, you hit target number one, then you bounced up. Now, something very interesting to mention here. I, I had this as a bearish pennant, but the more you're Riding this out, it's looking like it's an ascending triangle as you're looking at how this play is playing out right now. So you are making these higher lows gradually to the upside, and then you're also at this resistance right here. So if you can start getting above 719, 720, it's looking like you're going to push to 726, then quickly back to 732, 733 in a hurry. I also think buyers are stacking in on Tesla, and I think this is really due for a push to the upside because of how slow it's been moving for roughly the past three to four days right here. You've literally just been sitting in this block for a long time, and Tesla typically does not move like this. Look at how Tesla's been moving previously. The last time this happened was right here, and guess what happened? You went absolutely bullish to the moon, basically moving from 660 all the way up to 770 in roughly two and a half days. Last trade is gonna be Moderna, and this is a riskier trade to say the least, right? So you're hitting the monthly level right here, 146.17. You're getting rejected three times. What I'm looking for, I'm not even looking for a downside play. Now, honestly, if you come out, you get rejected once again, chances are you're coming down to 138. I'm just gonna tell you right now, that's where I'd be targeting. About 138, maybe on the less aggressive side, 140 flat. Just gonna tell you that right now. However, if you do get above this level here, 146, so what you wanna see is something like this. This is gonna be your resistance. You wanna see a movement above this range like this, a retest. That's where you wanna go long, and I'd be targeting 152 in a hurry. Moderna moves very good. You're seeing great movements overall every single day on this stock, 137, a pump all the way to 143. Back down, you see great volatility here. It's actually a great stock to day trade in general. So that's what we're looking for there. I really don't wanna trade the downside. I'm looking for more of the upside. Again, going into tomorrow, you can see my bullish bias right now. But again, I'm going to be taking what the market gives me every single day. I'm not forcing trades. I'm just trying to find areas in which the market looks the best. Like today, honestly, I walked in, I took Tesla, but I didn't even touch Apple or NVIDIA, even though they moved very good. I had my eyes solely on Amazon based on that gap and based on the price action there and the volume that's flowing into that stock. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Have a good one, traders.